I'm uh, Andrew McIntyre, um, a senior fingerprint specialist with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Farms and Explosives uh, Forensic Science Lab in Atlanta, Georgia. This is the uh, laser room, which is part of our latent print unit. So what happens is we will take evidence that's uh, received from the special agents and we'll begin to process them for fingerprints. Uh, what we do first is we will super glue fume the items and what happens is we'll heat super glue and the fumes from the super glue will envelop the evidence and adhere to the latent print residues or fingerprint residues. Uh, once that has happened, that fixes the print to the surface. Then uh, we will apply a laser dye stain, in this case uh, for this particular battery that we have here, uh, it's Rotomin 6G, and that dyes the super glue. And then we will take it here into the laser room and apply laser light to the surface of the object and check to see if there's any latent fingerprints that are on the item. If we have a bomb come into the laboratory, uh, it'll be assigned to a chemist, it'll be assigned to a fingerprint examiner, uh, it could have tool marks on it, so we have tool mark section or handwriting section, and we basically take a team approach to it to try and maximize the value of all the different pieces of evidence that come through the laboratory. Fingerprints degrade uh, almost instantaneously when you put your when you touch something uh, the print is subject to evaporation because it's 99 percent water and also ultraviolet from the sun uh, can start to degrade certain components that are in the latent print residue so the sooner we can apply the super glue fumes to it then we're preserving that as well as other types of evidence that may be present if we can find the fingerprints on an item then we can possibly determine who manufactured a improvised explosive device. We're trying to find the bad guys. So we are trying to identify uh, whoever may have created uh, an improvised explosive device. And so oftentimes in these uh, bombs there are batteries, uh, you may have the actual outer casing of the pipe or the container that the device was created with. If they've used tape we can we'll pull uh, layers and layers of tape apart and try to find if there's any fingerprints that may be under there as well as hairs and fibers. On this battery, uh, there's a uh, fingerprint that's fluorescing and is currently being captured by this uh, digital camera. So we're applying laser light, which is of a uh, specific color, and the color is absorbed by the Rotomin 6G. And what that does is it excites the electrons, and the electrons want to go back to their ground state. When they do that, they emit a photon of light, and so that's called fluorescence. And so we use a barrier filter here, which only lets the fluorescing color come through and excludes everything else. And that way we can see, uh, we can maximize the fingerprint that's on the item while lowering the background interference that may be present from the surface of the item.